Isaac Debra is a Wilson Center Africa Program Southern Voices Network scholar and an assistant project manager at the Ghana Center for Democratic Development. He joins us to talk about declining support for democracy in Ghana. Isaac, welcome to Now. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much, John. Thank you for having me on the program. I want to ask you first about uh, the source of your research. You've made me familiar with this thing called Afrobarometer that uh, measures public opinion. Tell us about that and, and what, what the measuring tool is and what it's been measuring and learning about democracy. Well, Afrobarometer is um, a research project that works in 37 African countries. And uh, it measures public opinion about democracy, governance, and economy, and civil society. And uh, they started uh, this survey in Africa in 1999. And they've had a um, six series of survey. So the last survey they had was in 2014. Yes. And you see that uh, there has been a decline in the, the indicators that measure support for democracy. Yes. So there's been a decline in satisfaction with democracy in Ghana. Is it just typical voter unrest? Uh, the government isn't providing enough services, whatever that might be from country to country. Or do you think there's something deeper? Well, I think there's something deeper because it appears in the case of Ghana, um, what I call intrinsic democracy has not correspond with instrumental democracy because uh, um, citizens expect that what does democracy deliver? It appears a kind of excitement, you know, that galvanized Ghanaian support for democracy when um, Ghana, Ghana started this whole dem this, uh, democratic experimentation in 1999 seems to, um, you know, uh, disappear because uh, democracy actually is not really delivering the goods for the ordinary citizen. Of course, for, for the in intrinsic side, democracy has made a lot of progress in the case, of, and that is why Ghana is often cited as a good case of what is good with democracy in Africa, because um, there's rule of law in Ghana, we have uh, frequent elections, um, we have um, vibrant civil society and all that. But when it comes to what does democracy deliver to the ordinary citizens? That appears to be a major challenge in Ghana. What, what are the areas where uh, that, that problem most manifests itself? In other words, is it uh, infrastructure? It, what, what are the areas where the government isn't delivering, or at least the populace perceives it that way? Well, uh, based on Afrobarometer data, it appears there's uh, um, mistrust for institutions, you know, the institutions that mm -hmm. are supposed to deliver the basic services for the ordinary citizens. There appears to be mistrust. And also, the government is unable to deliver the basic services like health, like education, and, and, and you, you can name them. The mistrust factor. Is, is there sometimes people are suspicious and there aren't reasons to be. Other times, it's a reasonable response yeah. to corruption or some other problem. Talk to us about the mistrust in Ghana. Is it well-founded? Well, I, I would say the mistrust is well funded because, I mean, Afrobarometer is a very authentic source of data. And uh, it's a data that has been um, won several awards, especially the American Political Science Association has, you know, once cited it as one source of credible data for the African continent. So um, um, the mistrust is well founded and it, 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 current, it, it really reflects what is currently, you know, on the ground in Ghana. You know, there are issues of uh, there are issues of corruption, massive corruption by this current government. And as a matter of fact, the issue of corruption has not been with only this government. You know, previous governments have faced that exper uh, have faced that challenge since Ghana's you know democratic experiments from, from 1993. So um, I mean, there are uh, issues issues across time, and current issues really confirms what Ghanaians are saying based on the Afrobarometer findings. And how do you perceive this in the long run as far as looking at the trend lines? Do you see this as a threat to democracy in Ghana or just a typical bump in the road along the way to building a better situation? Well, I would say, I would say both, you know, um, we can, uh, we can say um, we must pay critical, a uh, closer look at it because based on what's happened in Mali, what happened in Kenya, you know, it appears political scientists, you know, and most donors just took it for granted mm -hmm. that these are countries that have consistent elections, relatively vibrant civil society. So they just took those issues for granted. Meanwhile, opinion data demonstrated this similar, you know, uh, unhappiness with democracy, and they fail to they fail to predict that. And you know, we all know we all know uh, uh, know what, what happened to uh, Mali and later on Kenya. So, um, given the fact that Ghana is often cited as a typical example of you know political development on the continent, I think we we just we just don't have to just uh, see it as one of those things, but really pay closer attention because if Ghana um, Ghana happens to you know. Uh, um, Ghana's democracy recesses. Um, it will be. It will. It will break morale. 
you know, across the continent. Are, are you warning against complacency? Do you think that people have taken for granted that democracy is working in Ghana and they're not doing enough to make it work better? Yes, I think so. I think so. Because so uh, um, over the period, we've paid close, close attention to only the intrinsic side of democracy. You know, like, as I, as I indicated earlier on, we have very good elections, we have a vibrant civil society, the rule of law is there, freedom of speech. But then we don't pay closer attention to the, to the economic aspect of it, to the intrinsic aspect of it. What does democracy deliver to the ordinary citizen? And it appears in the case of Ghana, we haven't done much. Final thought, are people listening? Are people uh, taking seriously these uh, warnings that you're suggesting from your research? Well, we hope so. We hope so because uh, for me as a researcher, what, we, what I will have to do is I will, just be, uh, base, I will just provide the evidence and policymakers will have to act on it. So I'm hoping that they will take it serious. Well, thank you. We hope so too. And thanks for joining us, Isaac. Thank Pleasure. you so much, John, for having me.